Up next on this edition of Influence Living, you're going to meet Amber. Amber was dealing with a severe eating disorder. You'll find out who influenced her so that she could break free from that, uh, that terrible thing that she was struggling with. And then you're going to meet Lobo. Lobo is from Ukraine. You know that that country right now has been uh, torn up with war. How, what was it like though, growing up under a communist regime? She remembers that. And then finally, you're going to meet Michael. Michael has a, an amazing story of influence. He is from New Zealand. All that and much more right here on Influence Living. Welcome to this edition of Influence Living. I'm your host, Wade. Here on Influence Living, we talk to people really from all over the world and we ask them, who has influenced you? Have you ever noticed uh, that there are people around you that even though things just seem to be chaotic in our world today, they've, there's something solid about them? Uh, is there someone or something influencing them? We're asking that story or that question to hear their story on this program. Up first, you're going to hear from a lady by the name of Amber. Amber was struggling with a major eating disorder that would soon kill her if she didn't change. But someone influenced her. Here's her story. I was born in Germany. My dad was in the military. I've lived in Arkansas most of my life. I did not grow up in church. Um, I was a bus kid for um, all of my young life. At 11 years old, um, my dad got radically saved and we started going to church as a family then. Um, I have always felt like I have heard the voice of the Lord. Um, that is part of my testimony is that my whole life, He saved me from drug addiction and getting really deep into the world. After we started going to church though, I went to church camp one summer. And there was one specific night that um, I'll never forget it. I, I have always felt like the Lord speaks to me and He talked to me. I always felt like He was just a close father to me. And uh, But that night something just shifted and I can remember feeling horrible and lost and I just ran to the altars and I just cried and I didn't even have words for it then but I knew from that moment on I got saved and uh, we switched to a different church and that's when we began to learn about deeper spiritual things and um, there were two distinct moments in my life that I feel like God uh, really showed up for me on a personal level. Um, the first one when I was about 18 I had been um, battling bulimia since I was 14 and um, we were up in the altars and I was praying and I, I was a good church girl um, and I had been saved and I still had this horrible hidden disease that not a lot of people even knew about and um, the sermon, they had these chains, right? And they were wrapped around. We were all lined up at the front and the chains were getting heavy and heavy. And I remember thinking, oh, it's because it was pinching my skin. And I said, it's killing me. And uh, the Holy Spirit spoke so clearly and said, what you're doing is killing you. And I just began to weep because up until then, I thought it was kind of hidden. I didn't think anybody really knew and it wasn't a big deal. Um, and then the second, um, and I'm gonna get emotional about this one, but um, all my life, probably my biggest dream was to be a mama. And so when we got married, um, that was that was all I wanted was to have children. And so we started trying and nothing happened and nothing happened. And um, there, there was complications and I just kept praying and I kept seeking the Lord. And I had a dream one night in the altars and um, my arms were really heavy and I just put them down because they were heavy and I was tired of crying and holding my arms up, you know? And the Lord just gently whispered, one day your arms will be tired from holding your baby. And I knew then that I, I was gonna, I didn't know how, but I was gonna have a baby. And um, we finally got pregnant, it was wonderful. And then I lost the baby. I was just devastated. Um, that was probably one of the most darkest nights because I really thought God had answered my prayers and, and I had done all the right things. You know, I, I had lived the Christian life. I was a good Christian girl. And so I was angry at God. And through that process, God just showed me that 
Sometimes what we hold on so tightly to is what we have to let go to learn who He is. Now we have three um, beautiful, grown, healthy uh, girls, teenage girls, full of sass and drama and all the things that girls are. But God has always been faithful to me. And um, I've always heard His voice from the low, dark nights to beautiful, big moments, watching my kids walk in their calling, watching my husband surrender to pastor, um, all the things that He's done for us. His voice has always been the steady thing. So I'm thankful. So when I battled with bulimia, one of the strongest things that the Lord taught me was any kind of addiction ne never has a solution. Th there is no stopping point. Um, whether it's the next high, whether it's the next fulfillment with gratification of lust, whether it's an eating disorder. I can remember being pregnant. I gave the testimony of uh, my healthy children after that battle. And um, I was my biggest. And I can remember laughing and praying with the Lord um, because I was my heaviest, right? And that had been my battle, was always trying to get skinnier and skinnier. And for the first time, I, I loved my body. And the Lord just spoke to me so gently and said, the problem never was your body. It was the lies that He was whispering. Um, because you you can never get smaller. You can never get high enough. You can never, that, that, that will never satisfy. He is the one that satisfies always. So whatever you're struggling with. For me, it was body image. Um, and chasing that, I mean, I look back at pictures and I see how how small I got and I still was, was miserable and haunted. There's just no end to it. Jesus is the only answer for that, finding your peace in Him and finding your identity in Him, your worth in being His son or His daughter, not small enough or pretty enough or wealthy enough or high enough. Sadly, there aren't many young ladies, particularly that seem to be struggling with bulimia and other eating disorders. And Amber told us her story of how she broke free from that. And it was only because of God's influence in her life, God helped her to be able to deal with that. Maybe you're struggling with something similar, or, or maybe it's something else in your life and, uh, and nobody really has been able to help you. Let me say this, that God loves to help those that are helpless. God has a way of being able to do that. And He did that in Amber's life. She wasn't able to defeat that until God assisted her and helped her. If you've never developed a relationship with God through Jesus Christ, His Son, then I encourage you to do that. And then God, uh, ask God then to help you as you overcome whatever it is that you are struggling with. Now here's how to begin a relationship with God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Now Jesus is God and Jesus said, there's only one way to God the Father and that is through Him. So how do you develop a relationship with God so that you spend eternity with Him someday when you die? That is through Jesus and asking Jesus into your life, believing in Him. The Bible tells us that we are to do that. So I would invite you to pray just like Amber did, a, a prayer something like this. And so would you just pray with me right now, wherever you're watching from, and then I would like to pray for you as you deal with whatever struggle you're dealing with, uh, like uh, Amber was dealing with. So let's pray, say this with me now, say, Jesus, I know that you're God. I know I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I invite you into my life. And I make you my Lord and my Savior today. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, for those that are watching, I'd like to pray for them right now. Maybe they're not struggling with bulimia as Amber was, but maybe it's another addiction, another struggle in their life. I pray, God, that you'll strengthen them. Maybe they've not been able to find help with a doctor or anybody else, but God, I know you can do it. And I've seen you help people time and time again. And I pray for them right now as they cry out to you. I pray, God, that you'll intervene supernaturally in their life. In Jesus' name I ask this, amen. Now, if you just prayed a moment ago to receive Jesus Christ into your life and to begin a journey with Him, then I'm gonna suggest to you that you do two, three, two things. Number one, develop a relationship with Him by talking to Him. We call it prayer. Talk to God every day. Tell Him how you feel and, and develop that relationship. Begin to read 
about who Jesus is. Go to the book of Luke in the Christian Bible and read about Jesus and develop your faith in Jesus as God. And then finally, find a local Christian church near you or a, a, another person who is a strong believer in Jesus and ask them to grow you up in your faith. If they won't help you, find somebody that will. As you've made that decision now, you've got to begin to live out your life as a Christ follower. It's, it's more than just a simply little empty prayer. It is a decision of your heart to give yourself fully to God and to follow Him and to please Him in all that you do. At Influence Living, we just want to say congratulations. And I would love to know if you made that decision. There are the details right there on your screen. You could write us at our PO Box in Orlando, Florida, or you could shoot me an email at wade at influenceliving.com, wade at influenceliving.com. Go to Messenger on Facebook if you'd like to and let us know. We'd also invite you to check out previous programs and so forth. And then by just simply going to YouTube or Facebook and searching Influence Living. Well, up next here on Influence Living, we're going to meet Lobo. Lobo is from Ukraine. She was raised under communist rule and she's going to tell us about it right now. And I grew up in a big family. It was 11 children and uh, I was the oldest one and I have five brothers and five sisters. And uh, for Christians, it was a really difficult time. We were not able to meet during the day. We were actually meeting at, in the evening, at night. And uh, of course, for something like baptism or something we were doing the, in the forest somewhere far away from people that they can see us and uh, during the night. And in the school, it was hard because I was not the pioneer or in all those parties. I didn't uh, wear the tie and to be for whole school without tie, refusing as a child was not easy. And sometimes they will call us to the principal's office and um, actually we spend uh, a lot of times in those offices they were talking to us and telling that not, not to listen to our parents because they go wrong way and we will not have a future. And uh, of course, because we love our parents and actually we enjoy that atmosphere at home, this is what actually helped us to be strong and listen to our parents, not to those people because we saw that love in home and that um, misunderstanding and that behavior like with our kids, it was easy for us, for us to decide and see that to be a Christian, this is the right way. But it actually like for as the children, like eight, nine years old, it was, it was hard. We were like, like white, birds or something always different and everybody was pointing on us and and of course even to get after the school to get higher education or something it was impossible for us because they will give us lower grades and uh, even that was like not allowing us to really strive for good grades because they will never give us those grades. And, uh, but, uh, and plus the characteristic then when you leave the school with those papers, nobody will want to accept you in any schools. <laughs> because I was raised in a Christian family and my father was a pastor. And of course, you know, they were telling us the, about Jesus, all those Bible stories and in the Sunday school and everything. And all the time we were hearing about that. And uh, getting more and more information, I just wanted myself to feel that and uh, to be that close because I knew more and more. And then I was praying and asking God, God, I know I would, would like to know you more better. And I really want to feel you experience it because I was hearing how other people were telling testimonies. And uh, of course I pray for that. and. Um, and plus, going through all those difficult times, we were spending more time in prayers. And uh, many times they were 
fr um, like uh, frightening us that we will never see our parents again because they cannot write, uh, raise us the right way. And in the morning, leaving, uh, go to school, mom was praying for us and um, we never knew we will see them again. And of course, we were always trying to forgive each other and ask for forgiveness and with parents and with each other. Um, and that situation was actually keeping us really close to each other and close to God. And you know, when you close to God, this is when it's easier to feel that time when you really want God and you actually feel them because you're asking and He is helping and you, you can see His help. And um, when I was 12, I received, like, I really not just was knowing about Jesus, I was feeling Him. This is when I received Him. And uh, after that, I was baptized with Holy Spirit. And, uh, and I'm so happy that God, from those young age, just actually with me and uh, in me. My encouragement is um, God is real and He is alive like it says in the Bible. It's not just yesterday or years ago. He is the same today. And uh, we are going through difficult times and we don't know our future. And sometimes we are desperate. Sometimes we don't know how to do th some things. But when we are with Him, this is where our life has, is rich, happy and blessed and uh, if somebody never experienced that this is hard to explain but you can easily just experience yourself you can just ask god i don't know if you are real if it's true stories that people are telling i really want to experience what they are talking about and uh, if you're real please let me feel the same what what they feel have you ever wondered about all the angelic activity in the book of Revelation. In my book called Angels in Revelation, I look into detail God's plan to activate approximately 40 different angels in the upcoming tribulation period. God did not use prophets or disciples or even priests to reveal the future end time events, but He used angels. Angels in Revelation endeavors to highlight the angels' role, their calling, and their purpose to implement God's plan for the end of the age. I trust you will enjoy reading Angels in Revelation and find the information very useful. We have war, we have catastrophes, things going on in the world uh, that are just unimaginable. All that uh, was told of years ago in ancient manuscripts. It's time to make a decision. It's yourdecisiontime.com. Lobo's story was certainly challenging, wasn't it? I, I can't imagine being raised in that sort of situation. We just want to remind you that you're watching Influence the Living. Thanks so much for watching. Up next on Influence Living, you're going to meet Michael. Michael is from New Zealand. He's going to tell us of how he dealt with a bully in his life and who has influenced him. Here's Michael's story. brought up in the Philippines. My parents were missionaries. Um, I was about six months old when I went over. We spent 15 years over there. Um, it was my life. I went to American school and I, I really didn't know much about my country that I came from. I, I grew up in the American system and um, yeah, it was uh, very eye-opening. And one of the hardest things I had is when I was 13 years old, I was six foot four, so I was a big boy. And um, Unfortunately, because I was an American and I lived with or, or just we went to school with um, about 900 American kids, um, I was bullied big time. And um, I was scared to go to school every day. Um, I loved coming home and, and hanging out with the Filipinos and, and playing basketball and, and, and I just hated school. So for me, I came back to New Zealand. My parents brought me back because of the bullying. I didn't want to go to school. So when I came back to New Zealand, um, I went into apprenticeship. I did, um, I did 
the jobs, uh, I, I was qualified and then I went to the States where I'd never been in my life and I lived there for two years and I really found that all the things that I'd been taught about at school about America didn't really um, come up to the level of, of, of the things that I'd been taught. I came to know Christ when I was quite young. We, we lived on an American compound, it's FEBC compound, Fire East Broadcasting Company. Even though it was uh, a compound and we had guards in that, we actually got robbed about eight times. And I remember one morning, um, it was very hot and coming out and lying on the, the sofa. And um, at six o'clock in the morning, I got back up and went to my bedroom. And my dad woke me up in the morning and said, son, we've been, we've been burgled again. Um, and um, we came out and where my head was on the sofa was a footprint. And um, that really, really scared me. And, um, and my dad just sat down. My, my dad's the most amazing man. I, you know, if, if, if there was a Jesus, my dad would be him. He, he just loves people. Um, has a, a massive heart and um, he's my role model and and he sat me down and he just said you know son uh, you know things happen in life and, and sometimes they're there for a reason and um, yeah and he told me about um, the Jesus that I know and that he'd always be there and keep me safe and um, yeah and I committed my life to him at the, the age of 10. Now over my lifetime I've done so many things I've been a school teacher I've traveled around the world doing all different things and I used to own a large company in New Zealand and I worked for a larger company and I was one of their main con contractors. I have recently lost three companies by being bullied by a big company. My company did the right thing. We had the, and, and I had the rights to be right, but when you don't have the money to rewrite, I think it was the fact that I knew who I was as a person, I loved people, I cared for people, but I found no matter what you did, it never came back um, and, and they didn't really see you for the person you were. And I really struggled with thinking that I had to change to suit what they wanted. But I kept strong and, and um, you know, I fell into um, burnout from there, which led to depression and I lost um, my wife. Um, we went through a divorce during that time. Um, we had four children, four under four. Had all these pressures and stresses that just were, um, yeah, beyond coping with. Um, um, but I had my faith. A lot of the things that we learned from the Brethren Church were, were scripture, were songs, and I had to sort of like simplify my faith. Um, at that time because uh, when you're under a lot of stress and, and, and going through um, yeah, a depressed state, um, you tend to want to grab onto those things which um, really um, are just simple. So for me, my God um, is a loving God. He cares for me no matter what. Um, he's going to be the person that stands beside me through anything, through bullying, through the pressures of life um, and um, yeah I've really found a, uh, a peace and and he's slowly giving me that joy back um, and the biggest joy I've had you know I was sitting on the side of the bed going Lord what what have you got for me and he um, I don't really hear words and stuff like that but he said to me um, Michael I'm gonna give you back a gold mine, something, and I want to give you back everything that you lost. And I just said to him, Look, the biggest gold mine for me is finding someone who's going to love me and accept me for the way I am. Um, through all the ups and downs and my big story, um, and and he did. Um, and I've been married for two and a half years to an amazing woman. Yeah, I'm, I'm the happiest man alive. Um, but till this day, I still deal with depression. Um, I am on medication, um, I still have all the stresses of life, um, and I'm having to learn to balance that day by day. But every day is a new day. Michael's not the only one to have to deal with depression and anxiety, whether it's been put on by a bully or by something else. Uh, depression and anxiety is very real. 
a lot of folks are struggling with it and perhaps you are as well. In just a moment, I would love to pray for you uh, as you deal with that. But before I wanna ask you this question, have you made your life right with Jesus Christ? In order to spend eternity with God, there's only one way to do it and that is through Jesus Christ. Jesus told us very clearly that he's the way, the truth and the life and nobody comes to the Father except through him. Jesus is God, Jesus claimed to be God and uh, many of the early Christians believed and I believe that Jesus Christ is God and Jesus can set you free from your sins so that you can spend eternity with God as you begin that relationship with him. Would you pray with me right now to do so? Now listen, it's not empty prayers that we just say, it's from the heart, so it's a decision to believe that Jesus is who he says he is. Would you say this with me? Just say this, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe that you're God, I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sins. And I invite you in my life right now to be my Lord and my Savior from this day forward, amen. I wanna pray for those of you struggling with anxiety and, and depression. Jesus, you know who's watching right now, whether they're watching in Europe, New Zealand, India, here in North America, wherever it may be that they're watching. I pray God that you will help them as they, as they defeat this depression and this anxiety. We break it now in the name of Jesus. I pray God that you'll strengthen them. I pray that you'll help them to get out of it like Michael, like you helped Michael to do and others, Lord. I know that you're able to do so. I ask for them right now in Jesus' name, amen. Man. If a moment ago you just received Christ, we'd like you to do three things here at Influence Living. Number one, you need to develop a relationship with God. That's, you talk to Him every day. We call it prayer. Number two, begin to read about Jesus. Who's Jesus? Go to the book of Luke in the Christian Bible and grow up in your faith in Jesus. And then find somebody that's a believer in Jesus, a good, solid Christian believer, or find a local Christian church and ask them to grow you up in your faith in Jesus Christ. If they don't do it, find somebody else that will. Say, hey, mentor me as I, as I develop my relationship with him. Because it's more than just a, that simple little prayer. It is a lifestyle. It's a decision to truly follow him. Here at Influence Living, we'd love to know that you've made that decision or hear your God story of how God has healed you or helped you with depression or whatever it may be. If you would, there's a, there's a mailing address right there on your screen. You could write us a letter here in Orlando, Florida. You could certainly email us at wade at influenceliving.com. That's wade at influenceliving.com or contact us on Messenger. Go to Influence Living both on YouTube and on Facebook and you can see previous programs as well. Oh, one more thing. If you're ever in the Orlando, Florida area, I pastor a church by the name of Greenway Church. Go to greenwaychurch.com, greenwaychurch.com, and you'll see that we have four services every Sunday, five services every Sunday, depending. And join us for that, if you would. Uh, we have a Kissimmee campus. In fact, I'm sitting here right here, right now, in the auditorium in our Kissimmee campus. Uh, we would love to have you join us for a service sometime. And when you do, please shake my hand and let me know uh, that you found out about the church through Influence Living. Well, we want to say one more thing to you before we say goodbye, and that is may God influence you. In Christ's name, amen. Have a great week.